Okay, well today I converted this uh, rolling needle motor into a pure attraction motor. And I made a new rotor that does not have magnets on it. This is the uh, original rotor that used magnets on it. And this motor here uh, is just using uh, steel nuts. And these steel nuts are not magnetic at all. They don't have any traction. But the electromagnet uh, pulls on these nuts as they go by and causes a rotation and the rotation in conjunction with the way this needle rolls around in that hole causes a make and break on that wire there. Now I close the hole down so that the make and break is uh, smaller using a piece of uh, stiff paper with oil on it and that paper and that clip to make a smoother running motor and I can get it to run on a, a volt and a half um, but uh, this attraction motor something I've always wanted to make and I've never been successful in doing it I could never get enough force because of the friction involved and all the ways I did it but this using this screw on the bottom uh, the needle running in a screw with oil in it and then this uh, fairly loose bearing on the top, I was able to make an attraction motor where there is no back EMF. And this, a lot of people think that the flyback is the back EMF, but it's not. The um, motors have a problem in that when you have a magnet here, either an electromagnet or a, a regular permanent magnet, they induce a current in the coil as they go by, and it's the back electromagnetic force that works against the motor. And in an attraction motor like this, there's no there's no uh, induced current as the steel goes by that coil. So you have an advantage to it. And depending on how good you make the, the um, situation here, you can make a pretty good motor that doesn't have to counter EMF or back EMF. The LEDs are flashed by the flyback, which is the uh, magnetic field collapse of the coil. It's not the back EMF that causes the flash. So this is a non-back EMF motor that is just strictly a traction of the, the metals together. Let me see if I can get it to go here. Plug this in. Now what's happening here is the, the rotor's wobbling around, but it's wobbling around in a greatly reduced radius. And the electromagnet pulls on the rotor in, in such a way that it, it sets up a rotation. And you have to have everything just right to make this work. But that is a, uh, an example of an attraction motor. And... Um, very interesting to study, so I thought I would share that with people, that you can take this rotating needle and turn it into a, an attraction motor where you don't have any magnets on the rotor. The motors are replaced with a steel element that the electromagnet pulls on. And you notice I put a machine screw in there um, and got a real close tolerance here to make that work. Without that core, this won't work. But anyway, that's my little uh, version of an attraction motor. Uh, Peter Lindemann is really famous for this design. And I'll give him credit for how I was motivated to build one of these. And this is really the first time I've ever had success with a pure attraction motor that doesn't use any kind of magnet on the rotor. Thanks for watching.